I'm Keith Ghostland. I'm Ann Charles. And I'm Linda Quinlan. And welcome to All Things LGBTQ. Today is Tuesday, April 23rd, and we're here to give you the news and interviews and um, you want to start, Keith? Chit, chit chat. Chit chat. There we are. And she rehearsed that. I, so what I've got for you is the legislature. They think they're going to adjourn by that camera by May 17th <laughs> without Zach, we're useless. So they're in the, the, their sort of final month, and we'll talk a little bit about what seems to be moving, what's not, what we may want to watch. Nevada's looking at doing some fairly interesting things. Health and human services on the federal level, not so good things. We'll talk a little bit about that. And we got news from Aaron Marcus, who has been a guest on the show on several occasions. We have talked a lot about the Contra Dancing. That's the first, third, and fifth Saturdays of the month. They were doing a project of Larks and Ravens, gender-free dancing. They've made it official by unanimous vote. It will be totally a gender-free Contra Dance as of January of 2020, and they're transitioning Yay. into it now. Here, here. And this week's trivia question, which Ann got on the first try. Front page, Out in the Mountains, April 1999. They were reporting on House Bill 479 that had 56 sponsors. That's a lot. This was a bill to prohibit something. What was it prohibiting? I know. <laughs> well, my headlines involve Kenya's first lesbian pastor. Northern Ireland mourns the slain journalist Lyra McKee. Arundhati Kachu and Manaka Garoswamy, two Indian public interest litigators. Uh, the Supreme Court also in India dismisses a plea seeking civil rights for homosexuals. Colombian same-sex couples hold a kiss-a-thon in support of LGBT rights. A rise in homophobic hate crimes in Paris. Lesbians hold a conference in Kiev despite counter-protests. The court puts equal marriage on hold in the Cayman Islands, which is following the path of <laughs> Bermuda, apparently. Finally, the Sultan of Brunei's honor is revoked by the University of Aberdeen over his draconian anti-LGBT laws. Good. Those are the headlines. No wow. cruise for us this year. No. no. Were you going to go there? No. <gasps> Me no. either. It's not on my bucket list. Um, it seems that Democratic presidential candidate Kristen Gillibrand partied with drag queens in Des Moines, Iowa, in a bar called Blazing Saddles. And got fashion tips and yes. makeup instructions. Yeah, I <laughs> know. I don't know if she needs it, though. She's kind of, anyway. Fashionable. Yeah. Corruption is leading the homophobic NRA towards financial <coughs> ruin. The group most responsible for stopping firearm reform is also swindling its donors. So, let's <laughs> cheer their downfall. Yes, and here's another kind of thing that really kind of surprised me. I don't know if it is anybody else, but it's harder. Uh, Same-sex couples have a 73% um, likely, they're more likely to be turned down for a mortgage than um, straight people. Yes. Uh-huh. So I was kind of surprised by I'm that. I'm not surprised no? by that. All right. I'm cynical. Um, and, and another thing, which doesn't really surprise me, is among Democrats, uh, an Emerson poll found that Sander, Sanders had surged ahead of Biden with Mayor Pete in third. All the women came in behind the men, and a quarter of Sanders' voters polled said they would rather vote for Trump than any other candidate than Sanders. I was shocked by that. I know. I was really shocked by that. Although, uh, you know, it's early. Mm. The LGBTQ activist, Marsha P. Johnson, was honored on pride theme beer cans. The designs from DC-based artist 
play, pays homage to Johnson. Maggie Darty has won the third annual Pride Pills Can Design Competition. And we have a picture of the beer cans. So, And then we have a story about bald eagles, which we'll talk about. Randall Terry and his band of homophobic homophobes hound Mayor Pete in Iowa. The Cincinnati Cyclones defend anti-gay Chick-fil-A after a protest was held. And gay astronomer who helped create Black Hole Picture defends his female pair. Mike Pence's talk was canceled at Taylor University. And a trans woman has won, her, has won asylum in the United States. Unfortunately, ICE will not let her in and she is still locked up and the ACLU is suing. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll try to follow that case and see if she ever gets out. But anyway, on to you. That, yeah, I'm following that up. So one of the things that has passed the legislature and is going to the governor for signature, the Senate Bill 6 and 8, 68, which would identify Indigenous Peoples Day. And this is changing that October holiday, which might have been one of those European explorers, mm -hmm. to recognizing the indigenous people. It, it was an interesting vote, 113 voting in favor of it, 24 opposing, and 11 absent or abstaining. The primary argument of the 24 people who voted against the bill was, oh, we have no problem with creating an Indigenous Peoples Day, but we don't want to give up our day. You know, it's, well, we need to talk about <coughs> this explorer and their contributions, like they totally missed the white entitlement, and as long as I'm not giving up anything, well, you can have something too. Mm. And unfortunately, I think that's what we're going to see when um, proposition to the constitutional amendment eliminating references to slavery in the Vermont Constitution finally gets debated by the Senate. It's been on the calendar for five days and they haven't taken it up yet. Yeah. The split has been, you know, the communities of color said, no, you need to remove all references. You know, if you're truly looking at racial justice and reparations, that's the place to start. And there are these lovely historians saying, no, 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 we need to preserve some of the archival integrity. And again, kind of missing what is the intent here? And yeah. how is it you support My underrepresented own. communities moving forward? Why so can't they take the old Constitution, put it in a little? <laughs> I think the old Constitution will always be there in the archives yeah, from the Secretary of State. So if you really want to read it, come enjoy. Come look at it. There Knock you yourself are. out. The, the other constitutional amendment that's moving forward is Proposition 5, which is personal reproductive liberty. And that's in the House right now, House Human Services, which is the same committee that had the right to abortion bill. So this looks as though it's moving forward. Most likely it will be voted on before the end of this year. And the other big news for people here in Montpelier is the House has passed the change to Montpelier's charter that would allow non-citizen voting. Mm -hmm. Most of those voting against it was again the sort of conservative Republican and they said, well, wait a minute, aren't you creating two entirely separate lists? And Who's going to have access to that other list who has all of the undocumented on it? To which people came back and said, there's only going to be one list. Right. There's the list that you're using for municipal elections, that's it. And there is no delineation between if no you are list. or are not a citizen. So, so we're going to be looking to see if the Senate picks it up. You know, Maybe this not is something next year. may not come back again until um, January of next <coughs> year. And then the other sort of side story, Middlebury College, chemistry professor, mm -hmm. final exam, put a question in about based upon this size room, 
how much hydrogen cyanide would you need basically to exterminate a room full of people? And hydrogen cyanide is what was used during the Holocaust. This professor is now on leave. Could probably so now you're going to take me to bad places anyway. You should probably so. stay on leave. I, well, and, what was and, and I wasn't really clear on some of the details, but he had a similar sort of racist question on an exam last year. And there was controversy, and there was some disciplinary action. And he did it again. Okay. Uh, apparently, didn't get it. Bingo. Mm. Okay. And where are we going? We're going to Kenya. All right. Where we're going to meet <laughs> Kenya's first lesbian pastor, and I have a picture of her for you to see. Her name is Jacinta Naziani. She was married to a man before coming out as a lesbian. Um, she spoke about her long journey towards coming out in Kenya, a country that still has an oppressive regime for LGBT people, as we know. She explained that she was married to a man for many years and that she came to realize through all the struggle in the marriage that she loves women. I was looking for that touch of a woman, that love, that care, Hospitality, she said. I had the same feeling. <laughs> she said she wanted to wait until her mother passed away as she didn't want to embarrass her. When asked how long she was unhappy for, Nislani replied, 25 years. Oh, geez. She continued, I thank God for my daughter who I love so much. She was like, I'm behind you, Mom, because I love you. She said she ultimately came out as a lesbian because you can never change that which is in you. You feel it. It has to come out. Elsewhere in the interview, she said she p supports people of all backgrounds coming to her church. What I know is that there is no greater wealth in the world than peace. I'm trying to bring peace into this conversation because peace means a lot. So, good for her. Good for her. Now we have terrible news from Northern Ireland. Uh, murdered journalist Car Lyra McKee was a shining star of the new Northern Ireland. Um, friends and colleagues of murdered journalist Lyra McKee have said, um, have mourned her. She was shot dead during unrest in Londonderry on Thursday night. Police say at this stage they believe her murder was carried, on, carried out by the new IRA. And uh, these terrorists were firing at a police at police cars, and she was unfortunately standing near the police car. Her friend and publisher, Tina Calder, said Lyra was a journalist full of tenacity and empathy. She'd been working on a new book, which was only months away from publication. Just last week, she'd approved her cover, working on the final changes. The big green button was due to be pressed this month. It's so devastating. I have a picture now of her. Uh, in 2016, she was named Forbes Magazine, by Forbes Magazine, one of their 30 under 30. Um, she'd recently moved to London, Derry, to live with her partner. In a recent tweet, she said, Derry is such a beautiful city. I've fallen in love with it over the past year while falling in love with a woman who hails from it. There's no better times ahead. Here's to better times ahead and saying goodbye to bombs and bullets oh. once and for all. She was actively involved with the Rainbow Project and was due to attend an LGBTQ awareness event in the coming weeks. Policy manager of the Rainbow Project, Northern Ireland, Gavin Boyd, said she was someone that you heard long before you saw her because she was this tiny person with such a passion for the story she wanted to tell and the voices she wanted to amplify. She had many irons in the fire that you never really knew what she was going to do next. And now I have a heartbreaking clip of her partner uh, mourning her loss. The senseless murder of Lyra McKee has left a family without a beloved daughter, a sister, an aunt, and a great aunt. Has left so many friends without their confidence Victims in the LGBTQIA society or community are with, left, left without a tireless advocate and, a, and activist 
and it's left me without the love of my life, the woman that I was planning to grow old with. We are all poor for the loss of Lyra. Our hopes and dreams, and all of her amazing potential, was snuffed out by a single barbaric act. This cannot stand. Lyra's death must not be in vain, because her life was a shining light in everyone else's life, and her legacy will live on in the life that she's left behind. Thank you. This is a tragic loss of a young life and our hearts are broke for all, tho all those um, concerned. Those people who carried out this, this attack have no place in society. Those people who carried out this attack do not have any support. Those people who carried out this attack have attacked all of us. They've attacked the community, they've attacked the people of Derry, they've attacked the peace process, and they've attacked the Good Friday Agreement. It is really heartbreaking on Good Friday to stand here uh, 21 years after the Belfast Agreement was signed, and to think that there are still those that believe that violence is a way to deal with these issues. Of course, violence, criminality, terrorism was always wrong, and is still wrong today in 2019. We condemn it. We need everyone in society to say that that is not the way forward. I mean, this was, a, this was an attack on everybody in Northern Ireland. It doesn't matter if you're a Catholic or a Protestant, British or Irish. This is an attack on democracy. Terrible. Um, now I'd like to show you a picture of Aaron Daddy Kachu and Manaka Guruswamy, who are two litigators who were responsible for the abolition of infamous um, Section 377 in the India Penal Code. Uh, they became beacons of hope for the LGBT community. Their perseverance and commitment led an entire community to a historic win, humanizing their struggles and giving them freedom to love. As the Chief Justice said, constitutional morality cannot be martyred at the altar of social morality. However, in New Delhi, a petition was brought before the Supreme Court seeking various rights such as same-sex marriage, adoption, and surrogacy for the LGBT community. Unfortunately, the bench um, said that since gay, consensual gay sex was decriminalized, it was not inclined to entertain the review plea seeking other relief. So you got marriage, be happy be is quiet. what the Supreme Court is saying, yeah. exactly. Um, well, they'll probably bring other cases as time goes on. It'll, I hope it continues. Um, let's, shall we talk, I'd like to talk about the kissing in Colombia, if I may. Uh, Same-sex couples hold a kiss-a-thon in support of LGBT rights. Dozens of same-sex couples, and I have a picture of one couple kissing. Uh, they took part in a kiss-a-thon on Wednesday in support of LGBT rights. The event was held in front of the Andino Shopping Center in the capital, Bogota, where two days before, a gay couple had been harassed. A man pushed them, screamed profanities at them, and accused them of fondling each other in front of children. The oh, two the children! <laughs> exactly. What about the children? The two men, who denied doing anything wrong, said they were only hugging and holding hands. They called the police for protection and were instead fined for indecent exposure. Oh, God. We want people to stop Satanizing and discriminated against, discriminating against the LGBT community. We are not sick. We are not an aberration. We are citizens who are here to build a better country, as Esteban Miranda, one of the men who was harassed, said. Colombia is one of South America's more liberal countries when it comes to LGBT legislation, with same-sex couples allowed to form civil unions and adopt children. Uh, more stories? Or no, should? I think okay. we should move on to Colorado now. Okay. <laughs> What's going on in Colorado, Linda? Well, a gay male is running for U.S. Senate, and his name is Dan Baer. And he was a former ambassador to the Organization for Security Operations in Europe during the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he throw, he's thrown his hat into the ring, and we'll see what happens. Colorado has already broken a rainbow ceiling 
with the election of a gay governor, Jared Polis. Right. So we will go see how that goes. <coughs> um, only 50 miles from where Matt Shepard was killed in Wyoming, a GSA in a junior high school is being told not to support not to fly or display pride flags with the rationale that such items would be disruptive as the racist homophobic literature really uh, recently distributed in the school. And I reported on that last week, the mm -hmm. KKK kids mm -hmm. and um, the rebel flag. Well, um, the faculty that's telling these kids not to show that is saying it's for the same reason because it's disruptive and because it causes uh, um, chaos in the school. But to me, that's not a, no, it's that's not a, an e equivalent uh, argument. But um, so we'll see what happens there. I don't, I don't see anything different. I don't see it changing, but. And then we have the Naval Academy. Well, Bartlett <coughs> students as of 2020. Yeah. So that'll be that. Then we have these bald eagles, and they are really cool. There's two males and one female, and they are raising a family together. The two males are, not, are named Valor 1 and Valor 2. And they are sharing a nest with the female named Star. Together they helped incubate and hatch their second round of eggs. Mm -hmm. Three eggs hatched in March. This is when Valor 2 had to help Valor 1 be a good father eagle. Apparently he wasn't doing a good job mm -hmm. and had to be taught by Valor 2 how to, you know, be a good father because I guess that's why Valor 2 came to the nest because the first Valor, you know, wasn't really bringing food or protecting the nest or anything so. We don't know the parentage of uh, since uh, both of the males have had uh, relations with Star, uh, but they seem to be doing a good job, and um, the chicks are born, and they live near the Mississippi River in Illinois. So we have a picture. I tried to get a clip. I don't know if it'll show later, but uh, anyway, here is a picture of our three eagles. And it's the second pairing. It's the second pairing. Because the first mother eagle was killed by another eagle. Yes. A sad tale. Background. Yeah. And this is the domestic challenge for those international penguins. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was so we disappointed. It was stateside. Randall Terry has a band of homophobic <coughs> homophobes as they hound Mayor Pete in Iowa. Randall Terry, as we all know, by now is the leader of Operation Rescue and the fo is founder of it and is now obsessively following Mayor Pete around. Terry told the Associated Press that Pete glorifies and normalizes sinful behavior. He started yelling Sodom and Gomorrah but, but was drowned out by Pete's supporters. He also dressed as the devil, I really wanted to get a picture of this, but I didn't, to protest outside a house where they were having a house party for Mayor Pete. Randall's son was gay. I don't know if people knew that. but I didn't. Uh, and has Along said that he, he, he partially, <coughs> went, he was killed in a car accident, mm. his son. And he said that um, he had some reconciliation with his son before he died. I don't see how that could be, because why would he still be doing this? Yeah. So, Randall Terry is who led the anti-civil union movement here in Vermont. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a charmer. Mm -hmm. And he looked really interesting in the devil suit, I got to tell you. And the Cincinnati Cyclones defend anti-gay Chick-fil-A after a protest was held. So people came and protested Chick-fil-A, and the hockey team got really mad and they threatened to call the police and they were told never to come back and so but they're very happy with their Chick-fil-A affiliation so and and that is enduring I remember the 90s people were protesting Chick-fil-A 
it's been it's around forever that it's continuing. And you know, now they're starting to, you know, you hear them being banned more like in airports and things like that. So <coughs> let's hope that trend keeps going. Gay astronomer who helped create black hole picture defends his female pair. Researcher Katie Bowman was slammed by misogynists who wanted Andrew Chael to get credit for this image. Chael put an end to this discussion and then he came out himself. After sexist social media trolls tried to diminish the role of computer scientist Katie Bowman in capturing capturing this week's first ever image of a black hole by claiming a male colleague did most of the work. That co-worker blasted them in a now viral Twitter thread. Harvard graduate student Andrew Kale, a member of the international team that took the historic photo, stood up for Bowman Thursday night against the sexist smears, explaining that her work was key to developing an algorithm for capturing this image. So good for him, good for her. Absolutely. Okay. So associated with the Indigenous Peoples Day, on May 1st, which is a Wednesday, starting at four o'clock on the lawn of the State House, there will be an Alobawini group performing traditional Indigenous Abenaki dance, rituals, drumming, and there will be appropriate cuisine to go along with it. And then following the rest of the week, there will be events at the Ethan Allen Homestead in Burlington. So be I'd looking like online. I'd like to go to some of those. Be looking online. <coughs> Things that the governor says that he thinks are going to make it to the finish line for this legislature is paid family leave. Now, the Senate Economic Development Committee is still looking at the House version 107 rather than the Sununu version, which is being promoted by the governor. So it's going to be interesting to see which one gets put forward and if the governor does, in fact, veto and if the House can override it. He also thinks that S-54, the regulation of cannabis, is going to make it to the finish line. Only he has said that if it does not include a roadside saliva testing provision, he will veto it. Do they have the technology for that yet? Well, that, the House Judiciary was hearing it today. There is a saliva test, but the last I knew is predicted value, how often it would give you the results that you truly wanted or was truly accurate, wasn't all that good. So even the industry hasn't been supporting it. So it's going to be interesting to see where that lands and what the House Judiciary <coughs> ends up getting for <coughs> testimony. There's also a panel that will have oversight over the regulation, and it's a three-person panel. And what the current legislative version says is that the governor gets to appoint one person, the House appoints one person, and the Senate appoints one person. The governor <laughs> says, no, 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 that's, you know, the legislature creates, it cannot then enforce laws and that he should be able to appoint all three the same as he does to the Liquor Control Board. But that's not the way it's been done, right? No, that is the way it's been. The Liquor Control Board, which has oversight over all of it, um, is totally appointed by the governor. Okay. So, but the Attorney General says, no, 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 that's not true. Everyone can be a player in this, and it's not the legislature enforcing, they're appointing. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> And let me ask you, why do you think the governor is doing this with this saliva thing? Oh, no, he, is, he has been consistent. This is, this is nothing new. The same as there's the breathalyzer for alcohol impairment. Mm -hmm. He is looking for some type of standardized testing that could be employed. But if they employed. don't have that now. Well, well that's what we're going to wait and see gets presented before a House Judiciary. Yeah. What there is now is training for law enforcement officers on what to look for for behavior symptoms, mannerisms okay. that would indicate. Because one of the real problems with the saliva testing is if you got stoned two days ago, it might still react. Sure. So that it oversamples versus undersamples or Could accurately samples. Could give false samples. positives too. Well, no, that's what, that's what yeah. it is. That's the oversight. <laughs> yeah. So. 
So what you got, honey? Oh, okay. Here I have go, many girl. things. Yes. Um, I could see. I could see the pile. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I guess I'd like to talk, if I may, about a rise in homophobic hate crimes in Paris. Uh, I have a picture now of someone who is only identified as Daniel. He was murdered in Paris. He and he's 20 years old. Um, he and his roommate met a stranger on the bus and invited him up to their apartment. Um, and <clears throat> his room, he was with a friend named Fred. Uh, the men decided to take the bus home, Fred and Daniel. They um, invited the stranger up. Fred was stabbed. Daniel was in the other room on the phone. Um, the stranger attacked Daniel, who tried to escape through the first floor window, but the stabbing got to his internal organs and they found him on the street, unconscious. Uh, he was the embodiment of joie de vivre. One of his friends wrote, provoking and extreme, he didn't hide his feminine side, but loved to play around with it to feel alive, often criticized for being too something, too feminine, too exuberant, or too vulgar. He stuck out also for being very kind, funny, and festive. Mm. His murder comes amidst a rise in homophobic hate crimes in Paris. Three homophobic attacks were recorded in October alone in Paris. The LGBT organization Stop Homophobia encouraged people to practice caution when meeting new people. You oh. can't be too careful. Um, it's like the hookups on Grinder here yeah. and Craigslist. That's right. Now, um, lesbians in Eastern Europe have held a conference in Kiev despite counter protests. Uh, the second European lesbian conference, and I have a picture of them with their banner. Uh, they chose Kiev as the host city because they weighed the importance of visibility and solidarity against the inevitable security risks. Conference board member Biljana Genova explained that Kiev was chosen because it was convenient for activists from Eastern Europe and Central Asia and to demonstrate solidarity with activists in Ukraine who are under understandably feeling unsafe. Last May, radical nationalist groups disrupted an LGBTI event in Kiev as police stood by. Um, what happened was around 50 protesters prevented access to the building uh, shortly after um, these witnesses tried to enter. Protesters broke through the human barricade of private security personnel and released pepper spray in the hotel lobby. Uh, Inside, a Ukrainian LGBTQ organization reported 10 people affected by pepper spray. Uh, they received treatment at the hotel. Um, the intention of the protesters was to erupt, disrupt events and they were successful. The conference venue was evacuated on the last day due to a bomb threat and a planned public event was canceled due to security risks. Yet the conference achieved its goal of visibility. Despite all threats and efforts to silence them, more than 300 lesbians are here and fearless, yeah. Biljana Genova observed during a break. While conference organizers issued a statement in support of peaceful protest, there is no excuse for the violent attempts to spread hate and intolerance against lesbians and deny their rights. So they're, they're uh, still trying in Ukraine. Um, and now let's go to the Cayman Islands where same-sex couples will have to wait, wait months before knowing if they can tie the knot. The government, remember last time I yeah. reported the exciting news yeah. about the Cayman Islands? Well now the government has appealed uh, the Grand Court. On March 29th, the court ruled defining marriages between a man and a woman, but that was overturned. Now, um, the court 
also said the current definition of marriage under the Constitution violated numerous rights. The appeals court president on Wednesday said there could be a legal anomaly if the same if same sex couples married, and the March ruling was later overturned. There were shouts of "Praise the Lord, thank you Jesus," and bigots from the Jeez. public gallery from bigots from the public gallery. I thought gallery. you were going to say peanut gallery, <laughs> um, <laughs> including according to the Cayman Compass. The appeals court will hear the full <coughs> appeal in August. 1,200 people demonstrated against same-sex marriage. So oh. one step forward, two steps back, and they came Well, I'm not going to go there either then. No, certainly <coughs> not. I just have one. Um, <coughs> I have a clip here of uh, the new Emily Dickinson movie called Wild Nights. And um, uh, Shannon found, that's the woman who did the, uh, what is her first name, anyway, um, she found in 1988 when she read an article in the New York Times that pointed at a very different Emily Dickinson. And apparently, there are letters that um, Emily's brother, uh, mistress or second wife, or I don't know. Sue um, Gilbert, by Sue name. Gilbert. And she had crossed out a lot of things in the letters. But because of technology now, they could actually read what was in those letters. And I guess it points us at a very different Emily Dickinson. So here is the trailer for the new movie coming out, Wild Nights. Enjoy. They called her the myth. Too much has been made of late of Emily Dickinson's famous reclusivity. Hello. Let me tell the real story about this special poet. When Emily was a young girl, Emily did have a fondness for the daughter of a tavern keeper, Susan. Susan is to be married. I care for your brother, but my heart belongs only to you. <laughs> I missed you. Susan, you have to be careful. You are the one who writes the poems. Puts it in ink. Every poet has a muse. These are for you. One cup flour, no, add milk. It's on the other side. Emily Dickinson wished to be published, but she failed to make a good impression. Various limbs of your poems need removal. And these dashes, are they really necessary? Do you see how it is improved? He doesn't think I'm ready. It's because you're a woman. No man would want to marry a woman more clever than he, Jane. Emily. Your poems, they're full of things, things that are startling. Why don't more people feel as you do then? She had no idea of the recognition after death in the literary world. Wild nights, were I with thee, wild nights should be our luxury. It's beautiful, no? Okay. So, so much for the reclusive, celibate, <laughs> all dressed in white kind of person who. Well, I thought it was yeah. dark clothing, you know, buttoned tightly and, you know. Yeah, yeah. So well, this has been circulating in lesbian scholarship circles for many years. Yes, and her now it's love coming. affair with Sue Gilbert, her sister in law. Yeah. And I guess the letters really do, you know, kind of, um, with the new technology, they were able to dig through some of those old letters, but. Now, now you might want to introduce an interview that someone might have done? Yes, I did an interview with Susan Ambrose, who is a uh, Vermont comedian. Uh, Ann and I saw, Ann and I and Keith actually saw yes. her at um, Sweet Melissa's a while back and we asked her to come on the show and she did. So here is this interview. Hi, we're here with Susan Ambrose comedian, writer, activist, and radio show personality, huh? So there you go. What a package. <laughs> I know. And um, so I see that you're 
come from Vermont originally and moved away. Yes. And now you're back. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. And so what have you been up to since you've been back? <laughs> well, uh, let's see. I, I, I privately have a separate life from Susan Ambrose. Susan uh -huh. Ambrose is my comedy persona. Um, so we're going to interview her today, I hope. Yes. Uh, so I've been doing comedy for about four years now. And when I first moved back to Vermont, uh, I've been gone for almost 30 years. And, uh, you know, I left Vermont under some uh, difficult conditions because it was the 80s. And as many people who are that old may remember, it wasn't always so friendly to be uh, LGBT at yep. the time. So I moved on to bigger and better things, which was Boston. Uh huh. Bright lights, big city. And you've, it was better there? Well, it was better for me to be out and about, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, than than in Vermont at the time. So, uh, so let me just ask you: Did you go to the Marquee? You know, I think that was even before my time. Ah, the Saints? I did. All right. Yes. Somewhere else? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Yes, I did. Yeah, Many, I'm from Boston. Go ahead. I, I'm glad that you were there for me because that, that I would, may not have remembered all of those names. So yep. thank you. <coughs> so I have, I read in your bio that um, what really, that, you know, you weren't involved in comedy until you were sort of persuaded. That's true. To get involved That's in comedy true. because you thought it was unconstitutional uh, to that men could go without shirts and women women couldn't. Well, and so would you like you a demonstration? You were so funny, yeah. <laughs> that uh -huh. someone asked you to, you know, like talk to to get into comedy. True. Go ahead. Well, um, yes, <clears throat> so it was kind of on the bucket list at some point in my life to do comedy, and I was espousing as I do so eloquently uh, to anybody who will listen. Uh, why is it uh, unconstitutional? Um, in the United States of America, where there's no discrimination against sex or gender, why can't women take their shirts off in public? Exactly. Like, I just don't get that. So the person who was listening to me said, you know, why don't you come and, and, and say that at our show? Why don't you come and practice your comedy? And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not ready for that. And she said, well, just come practice. And so with that practicing, it was uh, the perfect crowd, and I just reveled in that evening and the crowd loved me and the show was called uh, The Right to Bear Breasts. So I just <laughs> took off from there and uh, once you get the taste of comedy in your blood, it's hard to put it back in. So yeah, I'm out now. You're out now. I am. And um, I see that you did, you did uh, you've been in the LGBTQ LOL. Yes. And you've done a lot of women's festivals. I have done some women's festivals. And how yeah. did you find them? Or how did they find me? Yes. Um, well, I <laughs> used to do a lot of different uh, promotional events when I was in uh, the Northampton area and uh, hooked up with some women that were doing the Berkshire Women's Music Festival and I ran the Rainbow River Fest and I've performed at Boston Pride, uh, Vermont Pride, and of course the LGBTQ LOL, which is happening again at Higher Ground in June. Heard, yeah. We can talk about that later. Okay. And um, so, do you find how do you, how do you find this has been like enhancing your your life? I mean, it, it was something <laughs> that you really wanted to do. I know. Well, that you didn't know that you really wanted to do. Yeah. But well, I've always thought I was funny. I think you have to start with that. That. Um, uh, you know, I'm that person in the crowd who makes people laugh, that has the quick puns and comebacks and, uh, you know, for better or for worse, you know, this could be why I'm usually single. I don't know. But uh, uh, when, <laughs> when uh, that part of my persona just started to blossom, you know, it, it, it really, it feels like something I was always meant to do. But like I tell people, I didn't get involved in comedy until much later in life, you know, mm -hmm. I was 53. So, uh, you know, it's, it's never too late to fulfill a passion, to do something that you feel called to. Yeah. And uh, I definitely feel called to do comedy now and to promote um, certainly the struggles of LGBT people, uh, women, uh, elders, large-breasted women. I mean, I can yeah. go on. Uh, my bucket list. Yeah. Uh, growing up Catholic in Vermont. I mean, it just goes on and on. 
but those things are uh, valid because they're not really talked about in uh, society. And if they are, it's sort of, um, uh, you know, just kind of a laugh. And so this is a laugh about a serious issue. And I, right. I like to talk about serious issues, whether it's ecology or sexuality or religion, under, uh, through the lens of, of comedy. Well, you know, I find that, it, that well, like, I, I, like George Carlin did a lot of, like, political comedy, but it was really, um, you know, you could really, it's something you could really attach yourself to. And so um, I really like the idea of, as comedy, as politics, or as, you know, a way of getting a message across in a very funny way. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Do you want to hear one of my jokes? Yes, I do. Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Look at the camera. <laughs> uh, which one? This one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so there's a lot of uh, myths about lesbians. That's what I always say. And um, one of the most famous myths is that uh, when women first meet, when lesbians first start dating, there's that first date. And then the second date, uh, they pull up the, the big truck, which is called a... U-Haul. A U-Haul, right. They call it U-Hauling. And that is absolutely not true because plenty of my friends have used Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I made you laugh. That's All right, good. That's just one. Yeah. But there are you know, so many because um, our community has all sorts of different uh, sizes, shapes, colors, and, and, and just like the flag, right? There's so many different things we can laugh about our community, but the, there's some truth behind some yeah. of the stereotypes. Yeah. So uh, I do my best to, to accent that and mm -hmm. to also, I, th I sort of see myself as um, uh, an educator. Like a lot of the shows are in straight venues. Like it'd be great if I could only do shows <laughs> in gay bars. What, what's that in Vermont? Um, we don't have those anymore. No. So a lot of my shows are with, uh, you know, straight people mixed in or just for them. And I feel that, you know, my future goal is to really educate people about some of the struggles that we go through as a community that a lot of people just don't know about. Yeah. Yeah. And the younger generation, um, kind of getting them involved in issues that they, you know, might be still have and you know be surprised that are still an issue for them yeah the younger generation has their own issues uh you know i think depending upon where you fall in the spectrum you know you pick up your your sword and your and your shield for your generation so you know where when i was a young girl uh aids was just starting and we ended up losing all the gay men in my circle, yeah. you know, there were just very, very few gay men left. So uh, that's something that the younger generation doesn't really understand. Right. That you could just one day go to the gay bar and the entire floor was all women now because we had very few gay men left. Um, so, and you know, they're dealing with other issues. So, yeah. um, you know, I do believe that we're all in this together though and uh, we have to work together and find ways to have dialogue and communication and that's sort of what I do here with this comedy you yeah. know that people can understand generational things through uh, humor right so I'm really into that now we have I know that we talked a little bit before the show but you have some really funny well interesting stories about when you were on a radio show yes and how you have never watched your right oh. hand again. But so it was my you, left hand. Left Thank hand. You. Okay. So why don't you tell our audience um, about the radio show and you know sure. what, what it did and and your experience. Sure. Uh, well, uh, before I moved home, I had um, I used to write for the Rainbow Times, which is an LGBT newspaper in Boston. I did a column called "The Controversial Couch." Uh, <laughs> lie back and listen, then get up and do something. That was the, the premise. So, uh -huh. And again, I would use sarcasm and, and comedy throughout that to make a point about political. It was political at the time. Um, 
And then I also had a radio show, three radio programs. One was with uh, the Rainbow Times, but uh, the other two were in Northampton. Uh, one was at the University of Massachusetts. And uh, the one in Northampton uh, was a fledgling new station that we were getting started. And uh, I had the pleasure to meet Rachel Maddow, because ah. she's a local gal from oh. Northampton. Now, she wasn't really famous yet. She had just started uh, her radio career. Before that, she was just a gardener and a lesbian. Um, <laughs> and she actually did a fundraiser for us. So um, I shook her hand, and uh, that I was it. never washed my hands again. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much that's it. Yeah. I know she's an amazing and and you know like f a person to have from our community be so up there and yeah. so vital and important. Remember um, me, Rachel, when I'm big. <laughs> <laughs> She'll say she what? Well, yeah. Now you have another story about a flag man. <laughs> the flag man. The flag man. Uh, yes. Well, the rainbow flag, which is behind us, and lots of people know about it, but what? some of your listening audience may not know is that um, Gilbert Baker was the designer of the rainbow flag and it used to have two other colors on it actually. Um, one was like a turquoise and one was a pink I believe. And the reason why they couldn't um, continue with those colors is because uh, they couldn't get those colors uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. So Gilbert was, a, I don't want to say a seamstress, but um, whatever the male version of that is, and he just started putting together all these tapestries. But the story behind Gilbert Baker is uh, I was in Vancouver for the International Pride Organizers event, and uh, God, I hope that doesn't come down on them now that I mention their names, but here's what happens. We, we go out on the street, and one of the uh, people I met said, you know, we're going to go to some club. Do you want to come to it? And I was like, sure, you know. And then we're all walking down the street, and we walk up these stairs, and we get to the top, and it was called the 420 Club. And I knew what that meant, but I didn't think it was really what it was. Uh -huh. And so uh, if you don't know what that means, you're going to have to look it up, is what I'm <laughs> going to say. But we, we proceeded to go into a room, and we were smoking some 420 cigarettes. And uh, with, I shared one with this guy named Gilbert. And I had no idea until the next day when at the conference they said, and now the creator of the rainbow flag, Gilbert Baker. And I thought, oh, wow, now I can't wash this hand either. Uh, yeah. Well, so there two, you go. two very famous people yeah, that I've had the privilege That's very to meet. exciting. Yeah, gay people. Yeah. yeah. And now we have about two minutes left. So if you'd like to tell us where we can find you, where you will oh. be in the next month or two. Okay. Where? Well, I've got quite a few shows coming up. I'm doing a show this Saturday, uh, April 27th at the Revelry Theater in Burlington with a show called Sex with Jenna. I'm only allowed to talk about my sex life, apparently. So if you're up for a late night show, I'll be there. Um, and uh, then I'm going to be at um, Femcom, which is in Barrie at Espresso Bueno. I, have to, I may have to look these dates up, actually, just to give you, just to make sure your audience knows the dates for sure. Uh, Femcom is on May 4th, Saturday, May 4th. Okay. Then I'll be Friday, May 10th, I'll be in St. Albans at 84 Main Street, a late night show there. Uh, and then I'll also be at the Shelburne Vineyards on May 16th, uh, which is a Thursday night, doing a, uh, a fundraiser there. And then in June, for Pride Month, uh, we're bringing back LGBTQ LOL, which, of course, will be at higher ground on Father's Day in the evening. Nice. So if you want tickets, you should get tickets, because that's going to sell it Well, fast. I know someone now. Yes, you do. <laughs> but I don't have those tickets. They're not here. They're not on me. Um, okay, well, that's great. So I think um, I, we met Susan at a comedy show at um, well, Sweet Melissa's, I believe, yes. right? And we wanted you on the show because we thought you were great. So <laughs> please go out and see her and um, find her wherever she is. And uh, You can find me on Facebook, yep. Susan Ambrose Comedy. It's Susan with a Z, like Zorro. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And we will look for you, and uh, we hope to see you there. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So now we have to go to higher ground for LOL. I know. That's right. And now so. what about... 
The trivia. trivia. Yeah. April 1999. House bill. 56 sponsors. Anne knew it. I didn't. What did it prohibit? She got it first guess. A man shall not marry a man, and a woman shall not marry a woman. And, and they use shall? No, no, no. <coughs> it, it, it was amending the existing marriage statutes okay. to include with the, the list of who you could not marry, which right. is usually your relatives. Yeah. That a man could not marry a man, and a woman could not marry a woman. What was interesting is that 1999, that's also when we get the Baker decision from the state Supreme Court that led to the 2000 Civil Unions Bill. So this may have been a move to try and You know, I remember that, and when that. you think like how long ago that was, it's like, yeah, it's amazing really. I, You know, it seems to Two me decades. like it was you know, quicker and more sequential, but I guess not. So and thank there was you. a lot more resistance than what we usually oh, talk yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. So that is our show. Good night, everybody. And until you see us next time, continue to resist.